Most people know me for traveling and living all around the world, but what they don't know is I am not the daughter of a diplomat or some trust fund guy. Uh, I actually grew up in a small town, technically the smallest city in California, uh, and it's in the middle of nowhere, and because of that, growing up, I did not have a lot of friends, and it was really hard because no one really believed in me, understood me, supported me. Uh, no one was trying to do the things I wanted to do professionally, as far as entrepreneurship, technology, seeing the world. Uh, no one really understood me or shared those same values and goals. And in fact, most people tried to push me down uh, and hold me back. Not just the students, but even the teachers and the principal of my school back in junior high uh, really just didn't have my best interest. Uh, and maybe I was a pain in the butt. <laughs> I, I can't say that I wasn't, uh, but ultimately, uh, because I was smart, that actually threatened people, and instead of having them try to help me, even the teachers and like the principal, they instead thought that I uh, basically was acting like I was too good, and therefore they were threatened by it. So I remember this story still to this day of the moment where I decided I was going to go to another high school that was much bigger because my junior high was less than 80 people and that was actually first through eighth grade. <laughs> there were four teachers in the whole school, one for fifth and sixth, one for seventh and eighth. And the whole experience was a nightmare for me because I felt trapped and I felt very limited in opportunities as far as who I could be around. You know, when you have 20 kids in the class and they've all known each other from first through eighth grade and you're kind of weird and different, you're going to get bullied mercilessly. <laughs> so uh, that whole experience was a nightmare, but I never let it keep, I never let it keep me down. And specifically, uh, this principal who was also my teacher who I had like this ongoing feud with when I was a kid um, he told me listen you're a big fish in a small pond but if you go to the ocean you might drown because I wanted to go to high school with like 2,500 people uh, and I remember thinking like okay that's a mean thing to say but I wasn't deterred by it. I was so brave and like determined when I was young. I guess I still am, but I feel like my younger self was even more fearless and relentless. Um, and I remember thinking when that principal said that, number one, this is not a pond, this is a mud puddle. And number two, okay, the ocean, yeah, it's big, but I'm a shark. I belong in the ocean, not in a mud puddle or a pond. So on that note, I went to the bigger school and I was still, I wasn't the valedictorian because at that point you're talking like 4.6, 4.7 GPA, who had more AP classes and like obsessing over your schedule to like hack and optimize your GPA, because it was an international baccalaureate school, and we had a bunch of AP classes too. Um, but that said, I, I still came out um, with early acceptance for universities. I got scholarships. I got a full ride to University of California, Davis. I was able to study abroad in high school in Japan. By the time I got to college, I basically was almost business profession proficient in Japanese. I still had to study a bit more to get there, but like I already had a solid foundation for that. And the point is, uh, even beyond all of that, I made my own path as being both a writer, a software entrepreneur, and a creative, whether it was art or other things. So. Don't let anyone tell you that you shouldn't do something because it's hard or not to try something because you're going to fail. Uh, you can listen to their advice and maybe get feedback if this is someone who actually has your best interests. But 
you have to take everything with a grain of salt. And this is true whether it is a teacher, a professor, a boss, a uh, friend, a parent, whatever, a spouse. Uh, hopefully some of those people have your best interest, but you have to realize that these people have their own motivations and incentives and their own bias. So ultimately you and only you can make the decisions for yourself in life. But I highly recommend to do what I've done, which is take a path that optimizes for more choices and options. Because if you do that, you're able to stay much more agile and you can ultimately navigate and end up where you want to be and also survive things like economic recessions, depressions, pandemics, because you're not locked into one thing. And obviously this comes with some sacrifices and hard work and that path is not always easy, but that is the path where you learn the most and therefore it is the path where you tend to be the most successful and make the most money. So one example of that was uh, going to the bigger high school, right? Going from the school that would have been like 200 people to instead the school 2,500 people. That's one. Another one might be moving to a bigger city, which I've done. I've lived in Hong Kong. I lived in Cairo. I've lived in Seoul. I've lived in Ankara, the capital of Turkey. Spent a ton of time in Istanbul. Uh, where else have I lived? San Francisco, New York, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the thing about all of that is in each of those places, I had a ton of opportunities and learned a lot. Uh, and when I felt like I wasn't learning more from that place, like I felt in San Francisco when I moved four or five years ago to New York, uh, you know, that that's when it was time for me to do something else because I outgrew it. But for yourself, I really recommend just thinking a few final takeaways. So one, take everyone's feedback and advice with grain of salt, trust your gut, believe in yourself. And then three, optimize for situations that give you more opportunities or chances for whatever. Obviously that can come with more risk, it can be harder, uh, but being able to be agile is how you be successful and anti-fragile to terrible events and tragedies because you can quickly maneuver. And another example of that would be the difference between going into a career field like let's say architecture or uh, even some liberal art, like you wanna be a sociology or anthropology professor. I have friends like this that are in their PhDs that have basically never really worked in their life and they're 30. And you know, if that's what they really want and love, cool, I'm happy for them. But a lot of them aren't even that happy. And the reality is, if you do the math, how many sociology or anthropology or whatever PhDs are there? How many professor jobs are there? The math doesn't add up. And a lot of those professors don't retire. So yeah, it's okay. Like ultimately, I still believe your degree doesn't matter. And I have another video about that if you want to learn how to make a career change without going back to school, which you can do for pretty much anything other than being a lawyer or doctor um, and a few other things like that. But uh, the point is, uh, if you do something where you can have a skill that's transferable, like being persuasive, being a good writer, knowing how to code, being good at math, uh, being good at building rapport with people, things like these, if you focus on them, uh, you'll be in a much better position than just trying to get like a PhD in anthropology. Uh, and also on that note, if you uh, think about a job, if you are trying to pick between multiple job offers, you want to go for the one where you're more likely to be learning a lot, meeting a bunch more people, um, even if maybe that job pays a little bit of less than the other job, because it, assuming that's a job that gives you more opportunities, in the end, even if you take a bit of a pay cut, you will make much more money faster, as well as just have more opportunities overall. 
Okay, that's it for now. Remember, your best self is always your real self. Razzle dazzle.